Hello, my name's Rosie. I'm the Director of Income Generation here at St Clair. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for your support of the hospice during this time. Thanks to your donations and our community who have been so supportive, we've been able to keep all of our services running at the hospice, whether that's in the IPU behind me here, in the community, or perhaps doing some services via telephone or video calls. This video is supposed to give you a bit of a view of how the hospice has been uh, during the pandemic and how we're adapting to everything that's been going on. So the entrance is just behind me here. I'm going to go indoors, put my mask on and show you around. So this is our reception area. Uh, the hospice has been closed to visitors since March and normally we have people visiting every day to see patients. Maybe they're coming in for group therapy or sessions with our counsellors. We also have families visiting to see the sanctuary and visit our Book of Remembrance as well. We've had a lot of practical donations here at the hospice and as you can see at the entrance point here we've got sanitizer and we even had a uh, sanitizing machine donated by uh, Buzz Catering and Lincat Supplies through the Hertfordshire Lord Lieutenant C. So we're really grateful for all the support we've received. If I take you in here, you can see our reception area has had a screen put in to provide a barrier between any visitors that we do come in and our receptionists. In the past we've had volunteer receptionists manning uh, throughout Monday to Friday, but sadly since we've had to reduce the number of people coming into the hospice and the volunteers here at the hospice, we're currently utilising existing staff to cover reception. Just around here is our memory tree, which normally families come and visit to see the leaves that they've had put up in memory of their loved ones. Uh, at the moment, we can't have visitors in to see the memory tree, so we've been doing other things such as taking photos of the leaves to send to families or um, sending out small videos of the leaves being put on. And this also is sponsored by Oakmont Construction, Construction, which again, has been a wonderful partnership for several years that we're really grateful for. Down at the end of this corridor is the inpatient unit. Uh, I'll take you down a little bit here, but obviously we can't go in at the moment due to distancing regulations. But you can see behind me here the entrance. Some of the changes that we've made in the inpatient unit to keep things as safe as possible. Uh, the communal areas such as the kitchen and the uh, family room are closed to visitors. Uh, but each patient has their own room with a patio and obviously en suite which they have as their own area. Visitors aren't coming in through the main doors, they are going around the sides of the hospice and entering through the patio doors of each patient room to keep things as contained as possible. This means that people can still visit their loved ones and we do have visiting regulations but we are making sure people can still visit, um, but it means that crossover areas are minimised as well. So if I take you back this way here, we'll go past the sanctuary again, which I can just show you here. And normally this space would be used for families to come and remember their loved ones or for a quiet space. We also have our Book of Remembrance in the sanctuary here. And again, if people want to visit the Book of Remembrance, normally they'd be coming into the hospice. But as we can't do that at the moment, we're sending pictures of their pages in the book for them to see. So I'm stood here outside the Taylor Centre, which is the other building at the hospice that houses a lot of our... Uh, office teams and the community nursing team and this was built a few years ago thanks to support of lots of donors who contributed to our capital appeal and of course Western Homes who were instrumental in helping us build the, the place. Whilst we're still outside here I wanted to show you as well this patch of grass which at the moment doesn't look too inspiring but we have managed to secure some funding to transform that area into a sensory garden for our patients, visitors and particularly for patients who might be uh, living with dementia or other mental health needs where a sensory garden will be particularly therapeutic for them. So down here in this side of the Taylor Centre at the bottom is the area that we call our community shed. Sadly obviously it is closed at the moment but it was uh, thanks to a gift from the Valiant Trust that we've managed to refurbish that space last year into a, a community room which is usable by support groups, both run by the hospice and externally, as well as using it for practical and sort of woodworking sessions and hands-on therapy sessions for, for many groups, as well as 
bereavement sessions as well. At the moment, however, it has been a saving grace in being a space for us to store all the extra PPE that we've needed. So we've had weekly deliveries of personal protective equipment such as gloves and masks and gowns and many other items that are needed in higher quantities than normal. And we've been able to use this space to store them really effectively because we're just across the road from the IPU here, the inpatient unit. So it's really accessible by both the on-site team and the community teams. Over on the other side of the building that you can see behind me, on the opposite side, is our eBay function. And I'm very proud to say that we've managed to keep eBay running throughout all of the pandemic. And we've done that thanks to our brilliant team of staff and volunteers. I think you can just see a few donations in the corner poking out there. Uh, and eBay is just such an essential income for us as part of our retail operation. And throughout lockdown, we had a, a surge of people buying all sorts of things to keep them entertained during lockdown, such as jigsaws and children's games and toys. So I'm still upstairs now in our Taylor Centre and behind me here is the community nursing office. There's a range of staff in our community team, clinical nurse specialists, nurses, nursing assistants and admin roles as well. All of these roles are essential to provide the outstanding care that we do in the West Essex and East Hearts community. And the team have had to change the way they work quite a lot to adapt to this new situation. So for example, people are visiting homes um, on their own instead of in pairs. Some staff don't come into the office first thing for their referrals meeting or handovers. They are done over video, video meetings. Um, and there is a lot more PPE and changing of clothes that needs to happen between each visit. We do always have some staff in the office for essential tasks and we're always available on the phone, of course, for referrals, family inquiries and other healthcare professionals. We work really closely with GPs, hospitals and other providers, so it was vital that we could find a way to keep communication at a really high standard. I can't stress enough how professional and hardworking the teams have been here in these very difficult times. During a time when everything was changing every week and uncertainty was the norm, I'm really proud to say that we've been able to be there for patients when they needed us, no matter what the situation. Behind me here is our Chief Executive's office, Sarah, many of you will know. And she's not in the office today, she's working from home. We have a small kitchen and then behind us we have the finance office and the fundraising office. Everyone on this side has been working exceptionally hard as well. We've adapted our finance processes so that we can be conducted remotely in some cases and then made sure we have adequate cover in the office to do those things that must be done here. And the fundraising office, perhaps the strangest time for fundraisers everywhere ever. We've had to postpone and cancel events, although in September recently we had a very successful 10k and walking in memory event held at the hospice, all COVID secure. Uh, businesses who would normally fundraise thousands of pounds for us have been unable to do so. We can't do face-to-face -face lottery canvassing or fundraising yet. Um, and the hundreds of bake sales and school fundraisers, fairs, runners, cyclists, swimmers, all of these people who are so kind to raise money for St Clair have been forced to stay at home. Having said that, the outpouring of support from the general public to the causes that they care about has been so uplifting for us all. At a time when we were so worried about whether we would be able to raise the money we need to the hospice to keep the hospice running, the community came through for us. Everyone will remember this time for all the hurdles that we faced, but just as much I think everyone will remember the good things, such as Captain Tom, Children in Need, Comic Relief's Big Night In, Food Banks, local volunteering, clapping on a Thursday. So I think that leaves me to say thank you to all of you for your support. Thank you for donating to us. Thank you for sharing our news, for giving us PPE donations, for shopping in our stores, donating to our stores, generally for caring for St Clair. Thanks to you, we have made it through the past six months and come out strong. We know that the next six months are just as uncertain and there are mountains to climb, but with the community like ours behind us, we know that we can do it together. Thank you so much.